Do you think that using Linux desktop is safer than a Windows desktop? You might want to think again. Hey Manish, you've got a story for us about a new uh, Linux-based backdoor. That's right. So unlike most of the stories that we talk about Linux, uh, this one's not targeting li Linux servers. It's actually an implant targeting Linux desktops, uh, which is kind of interesting because the use of Linux desktop is not very prevalent around the world. Right. Um, so this, uh, this, this is a backdoor implant, and it's disguised as a GNOME extension. It's called Evil GNOME. Uh, that's what the, uh, the researchers named it. And the other interesting part about this is it's, it has a spy. Its main purpose seems to be for spying capabilities. So, and that's interesting because you're not targeting a huge population to begin with, and then you're targeting them for, you know, to collect things like uh, audio recordings from the microphone, right. um, screenshots. Um, it also it has a module that um, it grabs newly created files and uploads it to the command and control server. Um, it can receive new C2 instructions from the command and control uh, server. So like all the typical functions yeah, you, you find see. with like traditional rats. Right, right. Um, are built into this. Into this, right. Uh, that, you know, we would normally find in the Windows and Mac right. type platforms. Right. Not even so much on the Mac platforms, but it's now it looks Windows, like right. on a Linux desktop, right. somebody has a very similar set of capabilities in this evil gnome package. Right, right. It's hard to sort of defend against this stuff because usually the creators of this have targeted you for a particular reason. So they're gonna go and find your particular vulnerability, whether it's your personal vulnerability or the, the environment that you're sitting in, some vulnerability in the environment or the, the operating system that you're uh, currently running. From what I understand, it, it seems like the researchers found this uh, from through VirusTotal, um, oh, and when they okay. when they looked at it, uh, the, there's a, an additional module. It's a keylogger module, but it seems to be unfinished. Hmm. So this seems this looks like it's an early um, sample of this that's not really been deployed, or uh, it seems seems to be still in the works. Um, so whatever command and control that's that's uh, coded into the into the implant, that's probably going to end up changing and things like that. So I think this is. Uh, this is, I mean, it's it's very interesting uh, to me. Um, Somebody goofed, and that's what they think. That's what the article mentioned. They they they, they think maybe somebody goofed and, uh, and uploaded the virus total by accident. Maybe just um, see if it would get detected. Detected. Right. That's Something typically, like that. I think that's what they what uh, hmm. people hoping do. that no one right. would notice it. Notice it. Yeah. Yeah. It's only about two percent of users that have the Linux desktop OS. You know, it's not who is typically targeted when it comes to the Linux environment. Uh, it's usually the servers. I think that's really interesting. Um, the amount of effort that has gone into creating this uh, backdoor, uh, it just seems like a, there's some determination there that we haven't really figured out. So uh, this the, the implant gets delivered by, and it, um, it's, it's delivered by a self-extracting archive mm -hmm. shell script. And it's created with this makeself.sh uh, tool. Okay. Um, so typically, right, like a uh, Windows SFX, um, you know. So it's like a shell, a bash kind of right. uh, self extracting executable packer of right. some sort. I haven't right. ever actually looked at it, but I read about right. it here. So sounds interesting. Yeah. Um, so eventually, it, um, it unpacks the, the setup.shell script and then. Um, you know, it installs a spy agent in the in the dot cache gnome directory path, mm -hmm. um, and then you can actually there's the path extent that's there, and you can check if that file is running there, and that's how you can check if you're. Oh yeah, I think they mentioned yeah, that right. Left, they yeah. they say to check to see if you have it. Um, there's some things you can go look for if this is right. In your directory. If it's in the directory, yeah, then you'll know it's there. Um, so you know, it, this is basically spying on what seems to be a very small population of users, which is similar to how an APT organization, that's their tactics. Um, right. Um, so it's, I think this is really interesting and I, I'm curious to see what this evolves to. The fact that it's targeting Linux desktops is unusual because there's probably not a 
large base of users using Linux desktop. I'm not saying it's un, you know, not atypical, but it's not widely deployed like Windows or Mac would be. There's probably other Linux desktop malware that's been out there, but it's really few and far between. Right. Most of the Linux stuff we see is really IoT or server-based, server right. um, where they're, you know, like a previous story we we're talking about where is popping an application that's maybe sitting on a Linux web server like right. Jira or something like that, um, or uh, 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 WordPress or something, you know, and right. compromising okay. via that method. So um, anyway, interesting. I guess we'll see if another shoe drops on it and we yeah. find out more about it. I would say if you are in Eastern Europe, you might want to check in if you have any Linux desktop right. stuff. <laughs> The reality is there's probably malware for all of the different OSs and just because one of them, like the more popular one, gets a lot more coverage uh, doesn't mean that there's not malware out there targeting the others.